rats, one of humankind's greatest friends, even if they do try to scratch you whenever you try to rub their belly. They may laze around the house all day, want love one minute, and then get fed up with you the next. And to top it all off, they may bring in a dead bird or mouse to prove their might. But for many, that's all part and parcel of having a furry friend living around the house. And for some, it's even part of the appeal. But what would you think if I told you that many cats carry and transmit a particular parasite, which some studies suggest could change our very personality? Hi there, welcome to Knowledge Cat. I'm Danny Ward, and this is the show about anything and everything. Cats are a curious breed, but what is even more curious is the parasite that many of our feline friends can carry and transmit. This parasite is called Toxoplasma gondii and leads to the disease Toxoplasmosis. A parasite is an organism which leeches off its host, and Toxoplasma gondii is a fine example of this. Toxoplasma gondii is what is known as an obligate intracellular eukaryotic parasite. What that actually means is that this tiny microscopic creature needs to live inside a host cell to grow and survive. Obligate just means it's an essential thing, intracellular means it's inside of cells, eukaryotic is the type of organism, and then parasite, as I touched upon earlier, means it lives off or inside another organism while offering nothing positive in return. These tiny parasites live and reproduce within the cells of cats. That's their definitive host. It can, however, infect virtually all other mammals too. Once this parasite sets up shop inside the cells of its target mammalian host, this then is called toxoplasmosis. In humans, we will never even realise we have it, as it produces no obvious symptoms for most. In a few very rare cases, people may develop flu-like symptoms for a few weeks, but usually this will just be self-diagnosed as a regular cold or flu, and nothing more. Toxoplasma gondii is sneaky. You'd never even know it was there. So how many people get infected? Maybe a dozen or so, a few hundred, maybe even a few thousand. Well, studies have been shown that an estimated 30 to 50% of the entire globe have been exposed and may have chronic toxoplasmosis. That's around 2 to 4 billion people, the distribution of which varies heavily country to country. In the UK, it's estimated that only 7% of people are infected. In the USA, it stands at 23%, while in France, it's 84% of people. In some parts of the world, this number can be as high as 95%. In most cases, these numbers are rising as opposed to decreasing. In the UK, it's estimated that a thousand new people a day are infected by the parasite. Should we be worried by this? Is it time to wave goodbye to our cats and lock ourselves in our houses for the foreseeable future? Based on our current evidence, absolutely not. This disease manifests no visible symptoms in virtually all cases. It's a latent infection that, based on what we know so far, just doesn't really do much in the majority of people. Although, should we be researching the disease further? Absolutely yes. Why do I say this? Well, there have been links and causation studies that have paired this infection with other issues one might face. Keep in mind they are just that, potential links. This is a word that scientists use to suggest there might be some sort of connection, not that there actually is definite proof confirming a connection. These are starting points for future scientific research and nothing more, as many will prove to be dead ends. Bearing that in mind, 
let's explore a bit more about why we might want to look into toxoplasmosis more in the research lab. There have been correlation studies which have linked the presence of Toxoplasma gondii with altered personality and behavioural changes. Correlation means that one thing increases or decreases as another seemingly unrelated thing may change along with it. Now it's important to keep in mind that correlation does not equal causation. Just because we see a shared pattern doesn't necessarily mean that one is causing the other. I mean, there is beautiful data correlation out there between the number of people who die from becoming tangled in their bedsheets and the total revenue generated by skiing facilities. But obviously there's no connection. Data can just be funny like that. There is some evidence which suggests correlation between toxoplasmosis and an increase in risky behaviour. And these people may exhibit delayed reaction times. Interestingly, it has been found that those involved in motorcycle accidents, more often than not, have significantly higher than average rates of toxoplasmosis. A similar phenomenon has been observed in mice, where more active mice, which have a reduced fear of cats, correlate with a higher toxoplasmosis rate. Does this mean that those infected with toxoplasma gondii will behave recklessly? No, not in the slightest. As previously mentioned, correlation doesn't confirm that there is any link present. What this means is that what we need to do now is to carry out wider scientific studies to try to understand exactly how Toxoplasma gondii operates at a biomolecular level and see if there are any consistent changes to host's DNA or metabolic systems. If we see anything there that can explain the link, then perhaps such a statement might ring truer. But even then, we'd still have to do a lot more follow-on research to confirm this as scientific fact. It's a vigorous process. Increased mental health conditions also correlate with toxoplasmosis. Again, there is no concrete evidence confirming this link, but it's something we should explore more to try to get to the bottom of things. Some correlation studies have found a shared trend between toxoplasma gondii infection rates and increased incidences of OCD, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia, as well as neurological disorders, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. Then again, there is near perfect correlation between the number of worldwide non-commercial space launches and the number of sociology PhDs awarded in the US, with clearly no real link. Both science and time will help unravel and explain what, if anything, is going on with toxoplasmosis. But until then, it's just a benign, harmless disease that cats unwittingly spread. Many studies also haven't found any correlation links at all between these things, and some even show the complete opposite effects. One thing we should actually be worried about, though, why on earth is the GIF image format pronounced GIF and not GIF. It's crazy, I tell you, crazy. So that's all for this week's episode. If you are enjoying the show, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and follow us on social media if you haven't done so already. Until next time, stay hungry for factuality.